Hello everyone, you're now with me, Ruben Gomez for TVS News at 5. The body of a man who jumped from the Sato Bridge into Sarawak River on March 26 has been found this morning. The Fire and Rescue Department said the body was found some 300 metres from where he was last seen at around 8.42 a.m. The deceased has been identified as a 27-year-old man from Kampong Gursik in Kuching. According to witness, the victim parked his car on the Satok Bridge. He then proceeded to climb over the safety railings and jump into the river on March 26. The Fire and Rescue Department's route director, Kirudin Drahman, said the body has been handed over to the police for further action. Broccoli and cauliflower grown through the fertigation system at the Agriculture Research Center in Semengo are showing great potential. Seeds from Taiwan and Japan are used for broccoli cultivation, while for the cauliflower, both local and Taiwanese seeds are used. The broccoli can be harvested in 75 to 81 days after sowing, while the cauliflower harvest is in 69 to 90 days. Both are cultivated in sheds, fed organic supplements according to schedule and are pesticides free. Circulation fans installed to help to improve air circulation to enhance transpiration, which results in cooling effects to the plants and the surroundings. Both vegetables too have shown high tolerance to pests and diseases and lowland weather and environment. Deputy Chief Minister Dato Amar Douglas Uga Embas and his wife Datu Dorin Mayang visited the centre to see for themselves this exciting development. Accompanying them were the Agriculture Department Director Dr Alvin Chai and his group of researchers and officers. Uga later also visited an experimental Bendong ginger cultivation plot at the centre and saw for himself for the process to dehydrated median fern. This gave the median about a year-long shelf life. There will be a one-stop market mobile application for fresh produce to boost the sales of local produce and livestock in Sarawak. This application will make it easier for consumers to purchase items. The Federal Agricultural Marketing Authority is studying a proposal to set up the mobile application. The State Director, Abdul Jafar Lian, said there will be riders to send the fresh produce right to the buyer's doorsteps. He said this is also one way of helping local traders at the market to increase sales. Apart from that, Abdul Jafar said customers presently can buy fresh produce or other products from Fama online store at www.agrobazaar.com.my. He said the COVID-19 pandemic has changed the way how traders are doing their business. Some of them have been using social media platforms such as WhatsApp or Facebook to promote and sell the products. Citing logistic reasons and difficulties in reaching the communities, the government is considering the use of single-dose vaccines for residents in rural areas. Deputy Health Minister Dato Dr. Noor Azmi Ghazali said the ministry considers the single-shot vaccine like Consino from China for those in rural area, as the remote locations may make it difficult for the rural folks to get their second shot. At present, the National Immunization Program uses the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine and Sinovac vaccine, which requires two doses to complete immunization. Meanwhile, Dr. Noor Azmi also said the second phase of vaccination will start next month, although no official date is announced yet. At present, a total of 500,000 frontliners have been vaccinated. Hello there. The AMNO-led Barisan Nasional BN has decided to contest the 15th general election on its own. AMNO had also decided to maintain the decision to not have any cooperation with Parti Keadilan Rakyat PKR President Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, DAP and Bersatu.
AMNO President and BN Chairman Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid Hamidi said there has been no discussions with any of the parties, either formally or informally. All other political cooperation and alliances will only be considered after the election and will depend on how many seats it wins then. Elaborating further, Zahid said that playing a dominant role politically did not mean arrogance, but rather a point of fact as AMNO is the largest Malay party. However, Zahid said, these moments when AMNO was not in power meant a period of instability for Malaysians. Zahid also hopes to strengthen AMNO's relationship with past Vaidya Muafakat National Alliance and caution the Malay Muslim coalition not to rush into forming any new partnership. It is UMNO's own right and choice if it decides not to cooperate with any political party in the 15th general election. Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin said what was important that Bersatu under Perikatan Nasional had forged good cooperation with all parties. AMNO President and BN Chairman Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid Hamidi said there has been no discussions with any of the parties either formally or informally. All other political cooperation and alliances will only be considered after the election and will depend on how many seats it wins then. Elaborating further, Zahid said that playing a dominant role politically did not mean arrogance, but rather a point of fact as AMNO is the largest Malay party. However, Zahid said, these moments when AMNO was not in power meant a period of instability for Malaysians. Zahid also hopes to strengthen AMNO's relationship with past Vaidya Muafakat National Alliance and caution the Malay Muslim coalition not to rush into forming any new partnership. And going on to the global update, an explosion outside a Catholic church in the Indonesian city of Makassar has wounded at least 14 worshippers. Police told local media that two suicide bombers detonated the device as people were leaving a service before Palm Sunday, the first day of Easter. The blast happened by the church side entrance. Footage from security cameras showed fire, smoke and debris being blown into the middle of the road. Officers also told Reuters news agency that there were body parts at scene and that it was unclear whether those were only from the attacker. Police do not know who was behind the attack and no group has claimed it. Priest at the church, Father Wilhelmus Tulak said security guards had tackled the suspected bomber. The attacker, he said, arrived by motorbike and tried to get into the church. The priest added, some of the victims suffered serious injuries. And here's the national sports update. The national football squad has ended its centralized training camp in Johor Bahru today, two days earlier than scheduled. Harimau Malaya said the, the nine-day camp was shortened to provide the players sufficient rest and prepare for their respective clubs as league matches are near. The absence of international friendly matches during the camp, which was held for the first time since November 2019, was also a factor in the decision. The squad head coach Tan Chiang Ho said they have achieved its objective of seeing the players still maintaining the pace in terms of tactics and team play. The centralized training camp, which began on Monday, was to prepare Harimau Malaya for the 2022 World Cup slash 2023 Asian Cup Group G qualifiers. Additionally, it would be held in the United Arab Emirates in June. Malaysia, who are scheduled to resume the qualifying matches, will face UAE on June 3rd, followed by Vietnam June 11th and Thailand June 15th. Well, that concludes the news at 5. Remember, 11.30 p.m. with Handy Gray for the Nightline. Ruben Gomez, anytime, anywhere.